And welcome to Sunbelt Basketball tonight here on ESPN as we also welcome you inside the HTC Center here on the beautiful campus of Coastal Carolina University. It's the Chanticleers at home taking on the defending MEAC champs of North Carolina Central. Welcome down to the court alongside Nate Ross. I'm Jeff McCarriger. Early on in the college basketball season, Nate, everyone's talking about the number five Iowa Hawkeyes and the preseason player of the year, Luca Garza. But don't look now. The Chanticleers have their own Luca Garza. It's Assam Mustafa. Mustafa is a redshirt freshman. He has only played a couple games, but look at those numbers. He's averaging a double-double with 23 points, 11 rebounds, and he takes the most free throws of anybody on this basketball team. That's a plus because Coach Ellis wants to go inside. On the other side, we're going to go to C.J. Kaiser. He's going to be on the outside. 24 points game, and look at that shooting percentage. And he had a career-high last game against Southern University of 33 points. So two established offensive players, two teams that want to get up and down the floor and put a lot of points on the board. We will see who prevails this evening. Great matchup to watch as we are just about set for the tip here inside the HTC Center. North Carolina Central playing for the first time since November 25th and 26th when they're actually at Iowa in that Carver Hawkeye Classic against the Hawkeyes and against Southern. Eagles went one and one and since had two games canceled because of COVID and they have obviously been looking forward to getting back on the court and a good start here on the easy layup. They just took the Chanticleers completely out of their defense, forced Mustafa into a bad pass, turned into quick two. Coastal Carolina off to a great start. That 2-0, a couple of big wins over the last week and a half. Early leaders in scoring here in the Sun Belt. Put up 117 points and 113 respectively. A little jump shots, a little floater in by Devontae Jones. That was the C play. Give it to Devontae and see what he does with it, and he scores. Very good defense so far by the Eagles. Sean's stepping up the competition tonight for sure. And early three, a little bit too strong. Rebound pulled down by Coastal Carolina, and here comes Diva. Quickly back the other way, trying to fire underneath to Caesar and out of bounds. Good idea, just about it three, four inches out of Tim Caesar's reach, but I like Tim Caesar flying down the floor and getting to the block. All right, Nate, so how does this affect North Carolina Central? Again, the Eagles playing for the first time in, what, about three weeks? Again, they haven't played since the 25th and 26th. Well, they've got to practice, and they didn't get to do that a lot preseason. Um, they played really well against Southern University after getting beat by Iowa, so they're coming in here after a W. That's a good thing. Here's Jones again. And a early foul against the Eagles. It's going to go against C.J. Kaiser. Shot to clears are definitely stepping up from the first two games as far as level of competition. This is a basketball team that's picked to win the MEAC. It's a very good league, and they've kind of been the team of the MEAC in the last couple of years, speaking of North Carolina Central. That foul actually against Perkins, not against Kaiser. Man to man all the way, and they're getting in their face. Mustafa up and under, missed it. Tip won't go. Ball's loose and comes out to the Eagles. Perkins down the lane. And nice touch off the glass. Early lead here for North Carolina Central. Jordan Perkins kind of a throwback. He's only taken one three all year. That's what he wants to do is get to the rim, and he's very effective when he does. In the corner, Devontae Jones, long three, in and out. Rebound down to the Eagles. Well, this is going to be an interesting game to watch tonight. Much different than the first two opponents, with all due respect, Nate, that we saw the Shauna Clears face here over the last week and a half. There's no question about it. North Carolina Central, not huge, but big enough inside, but really plays hard on the defensive end. And a foul against the Shauna Clears. Nicholas Fennell drawing the foul. Yeah, Coastal's season opener against North Carolina Wesley in an easy win. And, of course, last week their win against Columbia International, they won 113-56. to And that was the first thing that Coach Ellis said to us as we were walking out of the arena that night after that win against Columbia International. He said, Monday night is going to be a whole <laughs> different deal. He knows. <laughs> Eagles, as Nate just mentioned, 
three-time defending conference tournament champions out of the MEAC. So not just a really good team, but a championship team. Yep. They've actually been to the NCAA tournament now four times in the last six years. So this is a very good basketball program. And, of course, would have gone last year as a regular season champion, number one seed, just never got past the first round. The tournament was postponed as most were. Canceled, I guess is the proper word. Tyrek Dixon draws the foul against Jameer Moultrie. We might be in the one-on-one -on -one quickly here, Jeff, because both teams want to drive to the basket. One, both teams want to penetrate, and both teams are playing man-to-man. -man. So whoever probably plays better man defense and fouls less will have the advantage. Diva inbounds to Caesar. Back to Mustafa. Bounce pass back door, but Jones was stuck in the baseline. And they force a travel on Devontae Jones, and immediately, Nate, you can tell maybe not so much on the offensive side yet, but on the defensive side, the intensity, uh, you know, North Carolina Central versus the first two opponents. Well, Kaiser just got in in the face right there of Devontae Jones and causing a walk, and when Mustafa gets it inside, he's playing it against at least one and a half guys. They're shading to him. He's not going to have an easy one-on-one. -on -one. And another walk on the other end. Cabea shuffles his feet. Well, Cabea really did a good job against Mustafa early, and Mustafa just did a great job against Cabea and caused him to travel by just walling up, being vertical, and not letting him do anything until he shuffled his feet, and the referees called it. Again, starting five here for Coastal here tonight. Tyreek Dixon, there you see with the basketball. Devontae Jones, Abrim Adiba, Tim Caesar, and Hassan Mustafa. And an offensive foul. Called Dixon on the hook here as he drove into the middle. Patrick Evans, P P Patrick Evans, excuse me, makes that call. Good call in the middle. Starting five for the Eagles. Inbound in the basketball, you see Nicholas Fennell, Jameer Moultrie, Jordan Perkins, Nehemi Kabea, and C.J. Kaiser, despite the fact that he Leads the team in scoring, making his first start of the season. And a blocking foul. Chance for a three-point play here early on for the Eagles. And that's two on Mustafa with not even playing four minutes of the game. If you're playing against the Shiny Clears, one of the main things is get the big guy out of the game. They just did it. So Deshaun Thomas now will check in as Mustafa heads to the bench. He's probably done for the first half. Now I'm thinking because both teams are playing such aggressive man-to-man, -man, who's going to get out of their personality offensively first or whose defense is going to prevail first? So far, it's been the guys in the maroon shirts. Eagles three for five here to start the game, a 9-2 to early lead. So Mustafa out, Thomas in. Thomas has played really well in the first two games. Caesar lost it, has it poked away again. Another steal here for North Carolina Central. Step through into the lane, good finish with the left by Fennell. And Coach Ellis and Coastal Carolina want a timeout, down nine. And we will take a timeout here at the HTC Center. What a start here for the Eagles, 16.04 to play. North Carolina Central off to an 11-2 lead, 16.04 to play. We're just underway, and what a start again for the Eagles, four of six from the field. Here you see the drive and the finish by Jordan Perkins, and boy, have they been aggressive. Here's Fennell again, the step through in the lane, and again, a nine-point lead early, but you know, they're D1 players, Nate. We talk about this all the time. They can make shots, but how about the defense? The Eagles have forced the Shauna Clears into five turnovers already, which has led to seven points on the other end. Yeah, you could just see it in North Carolina Central Huddle. They're exceptionally confident right now because their defense is just taking the ball away from the Shanta Clears. They're just giving it up with five turnovers quickly. They got to do something to get the defense to back up. Transition's one thing, but they got to score in the half court. They haven't been able to do it yet. Abrima Diva now bringing the ball up the floor, taking him 10 seconds just to start the offense. The defense right now, it's just one of those early starts here, and sometimes we see it, Nate, and 
you coached at App State and you coached at the Citadel, it just seems like sometimes you're playing against seven guys on the court. Well, they're v- you're right. They're very active, speaking of North Carolina Central. They're surrounding the ball when it gets into the lane with two and three people, and the Chanticleers have to drive. If there's an opportunity, take it. If not, kick it back out because they're collapsing and not letting you get easy ones. On the other side, North Carolina Central is going right to the rim. Garrett Green is into the lineup for the first time. And also checking in, DeAnthony Tipler has been off to a hot start in the first two games. Good finish at the rim by Thomas. Really good job by Thomas. Coming off a little baseline screen from Garrett Green. And the best passer, one of the best in the country, Deba gets him from the high post. Now that's fine at one end. Chanticleer's got to stop him at this end. They haven't been able to do that yet. Moultrie swings it to Fennell. Long three-pointer in and out. Tipped. And Tipler's got it. Tipler averaging 21 points per game over the first two contests this as season. A, as a non-starter. Garrett Green walked with it. So another turnover on Coastal. They're sixth already. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. The, the shot clears when it goes inside, they're getting double teamed. Will they continue to do that, or will they let the defense win and settle for the deep ones? You know, I know what Coach Allison Company wants them to do. We'll see if they do it. E.J. Kaiser high off the glass, and it rolls in. Kaiser averaging 24 points per game here at the start of the season, 18 for 31 to start his year. Did not rush that move, just took what the defense gave him with a nice little extended layup, we'll call it. Long three-pointer by Tipler, knocks it in. If he shoots it from out there, we're okay. Don't worry about that. That young man can stroke it. Quickly cuts the lead down to six. First three-pointer of the game by either side. Perkins back to Moultrie. Sean's switching on every screen like they always do. Moultrie right past Thomas. Again, high off the class. Missed it. Offensive rebound. Shot blocked by Thomas. Good job by not fouling and keeping it inbound. Sean declares with a transition break. Diva slices into the lane. Nice touch. I don't think there's any doubt. Coach Ellis knows is his kids can score in transition. Can they score in the half court against a really good defense? We're going to find out in little, the next 33 minutes. A little 5-0 run here for Coastal Carolina. Three-pointer by the Eagles. No good. Again, offensive rebound. But a whistle, and it looks like a foul. I'm pretty sure they're against Thomas, and it is. So, again, if you're just tuning in, Assam Mostafa, who's averaging a double-double over the first two games for Coastal, he's on the bench with two fouls. That's his sub right there, Deshaun Thomas, so he picks up his first. Second foul on Deshaun Thomas. Coach Ellis has to make a decision. Hadn't happened yet, but we'll see. And there's a young man with two initially really quick in the game, too. Another free throw coming up for Jordan Perkins, preseason all-conference player here for the Eagles. Such a helpless feeling to get two quick ones and know you're going to be sitting there for a while. Yeah. And I'm sure that was the game plan of Lavelle Moten. Let's get the big guy in foul trouble quick, and they did. Fourteen to nine. Eagles on top early. We were talking about that game against Iowa where North Carolina Central played really well. You and I were watching the game, and the uh, Eagles had an early lead on Iowa, trailed 28-24, to 24, but then all of a sudden Iowa went on that big 16-2 to two run and yep. put them away. So, again, for North Carolina Central, not playing since November 25th and 26th. We'll see how their legs are here over the next 5-10 minutes. See if that plays a factor at all. Palmer, a three-pointer, is short. Trying to clear are lucky that North Carolina Central is missing the defense because there's no defense out there. Diva thought about the three and has it stripped away. There's the defense again for North Carolina Central. Three on one back the other way and skying into the air is C.J. Kaiser. Tipler was there and Kaiser basically jumped over him. It's in a confident team on the road who's one and one and got beat pretty handily by Iowa, but... Uh, 
They don't look like it right here. Kaiser, the conference player of the week to start the season. Three-pointer, no good, but a foul. Tipple went off two baseline screens. All It's like an Iverson cut under the basket. Got fouled on the shot. It's going to go to the line for three, they think. They're going to check it. Yes, three. Landis Poole checking with his two teammates in the striped shorts to make sure it was a three, and it was. He saw the foul. He couldn't see this young man's feet. A good shot of Tipler. Junior guard from Ashland, Mississippi. Coming off the bench, if you average as many points as minutes played, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> basically what he does. 43 points in the first two games for Tipler. Attack on a couple here. He'll get one more. Tipler, a junior college transfer from Northeast Community College up in Nebraska where he was a junior college All-American. We know Lavelle, Lavelle Moten likes to play a 2-3 zone, but he's not going to play it if this kid's in the game. It's just not a smart move because of that. He's really effective at putting the biscuit in the basket. Tipler makes all three, and that makes it a two-point game. Shots looked like they were out of sync. They didn't know what defense they were in. Now they do. They were going to press, and they didn't. Back to man. Eagles led early by nine. A little hesitation. Wow. Move. Another block by Thomas. And now turnover as Garrett Green was trying to lead Tipler and he almost threw it over the top of him. And that'll bring us to immediate timeout with 11.59 left to play. What a start here to the half. North Carolina Central by two. After an early nine-point lead by North Carolina Central, 13-4, to four, the Shonda Clear is now four for the last four from the field to make this a two-point game. Nate, as we get to your things that matter here tonight. For North Carolina Central, be quick and don't hurry, the great John Wooden used to say. They like to set a lot of screens. they got to be effective in setting them. Don't do it quickly. Do it properly. And got to know where the makers are. They like to play a 2-3 zone. They haven't done it yet, but they will later. you got to know where the makers are on the other team, and the Shonda's have a bunch of them. For the Shanti Clears, they want to play inside out. That's what Coach Ellis wants to do. But when the ball's going inside, these bigs have been double teamed. They've got to deal with it, and they've got to rebound. They're a very good rebounding team. North Carolina Central has not been a good rebounding team so far. And so far in this game, it's 7-4. Shanti on the lead in the, on the glass. And the Shanti Clears also trying to go inside out early, and that also cost Assam Mostafa two fouls. So, again, he's on the bench here early as Deshaun Thomas, the sub, has been filling in. Thomas picked up an early foul. What a great start, though, for Thomas. Again, playing behind Mostafa the first two games, averaging 11.5 points per game. And also, obviously, in there banging around, getting rebounds. That's not a live ball turnover, but it's a turnover. But it's only the Rams' second of the game. Excuse me, Eagles. Dixon floats it to Thomas with the dunk. Is that a pass or is that a shot? Let's I'll go with a pass. To you. Okay, we'll say pass. He's close. I'm going with maybe a shot to begin with, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, wait a second, Thomas is right oh, there. He's really that good to do that? Okay, we'll give him that. Another three-pointer, and that one banks in for Jonathan Maxwell. Interesting story here for North Carolina Central. Maxwell literally just joined the team today. He's a 6'8", 230 redshirt senior, a transfer from Iona who did not play last year. And literally some of the coaches didn't even know anything about him yet. Dixon missed that shot and then tipped that shot in. They're going to review that last one as the referee ran by the table. He gave him the signal. Not that shot, but the three at, at this end earlier to see if it was a three. But you got to wait for a dead ball for that. So for the moment, we are tied at 18 as Deba pulls down the rebound. Gives it back up to Dixon. Tipler drives, gets around his man, misses the layup, though. Tried to shoot with the right hand on the left side. Just laid in with that left hand. He turned down the screen, and the defense didn't realize it. And he was wide open. Kaiser <laughs> softly rolls it in from the free throw line. C.J. Kaiser can score it when he wants. So far, so good with six points. Oh, 
Dixon drives. Wow, what a great move. He was turned down on one side by the double team, spun back the other way. When that ball gets in that teal area, there's two maroon shirts waiting for you. Tie game at 20. And Melvin draws the foul. I think that is two on both bigs for Rashawn Declears. That's on Thomas. Yep. Yep, you're right. It does go against Rashawn Thomas. So you're right. Mostafa with two, and now Thomas with two. Here comes Tim Caesar. That's the only big they have available because Rosanica Tingay in sweats hasn't played yet this year. Mike Melvin at the free throw line knocks in the first. Melvin, another senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's a really good free throw shooting team at 75% on the young season so far. Anything over 70 is good. Now the Eagles lost a couple of starters from their squad last year, including Blount, who was the MEAC player of the year. But they got a lot of guys back, a lot of guys with a lot of experience. And now a two-point lead on the road here with 9.33 to play. Man to man, talking and communicating and not letting anything hurt them in the paint so far. There's the double team. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Tipler caught in the corner. A little fadeaway jumper off the back of the iron. Tough shot, but the clock was running out on him. And out of control, turning it over is Melvin. Yeah, but that is one quick move. He just slipped on the baseline there. He blew by everybody in a white shirt. They want to get to the rim, and so far, so good, they've gotten to the rim. Is this the 11th guy that's brought the ball to the floor for Sean Clears, I think? <laughs> I mean, anybody. They've got so many point guards. They're so versatile in that way. Dixon, quick trigger on the three. Good shot. Assisty Prima Diva, number three, I believe. Coastal Carolina with their first lead of the game. Here with eight and a half minutes to play first half. Here's Kaiser again. He score, if he has a big night against Diva, he earns them. Palmer, what, a, what fake. a fake. Can't knock in the three. Palmer has started each of the last two games, not starting tonight, coming off the bench instead. Penetration is tough for the shunts. Tipler left open. He hits the three. And the Shauna clears now with three three-pointers. Assist number four for the man who's number one in the nation in assists, Supreme Diva. And another timeout, 7.58 left to play in the first half. Back and forth we go again. Coastal Carolina with a couple of threes, their first lead of the night. Well, a big early stat in this one. There you see the turnovers, eight by the Shauna Clears, just three for the Eagles, and points off turnovers, Nate, 11 points off turnovers for the Eagles. But it does seem, though, over the last four or five minutes that the Shauna Clears have made some adjustments, though. Now a 6-0 run, now their first lead of the night. Well, those 11 points off turnovers were just taking the ball out of the Shanta Clears' hands or slapping it loose and going three-on-one or three-on-two and getting layups all the time. The shots have not turned it over that way as much. Live ball turnovers kill you. On the other hand, North Carolina Central, as the last two turnovers, were dead ball turnovers. One kid stepped out of bounds and then another um, offensive foul. So the live ball ones beat you bad because it turns into a transition opportunity. Get a 6-0 run right now for Coastal Carolina. A three-point lead. Missed layup by Moultrie. But a penetration all the way to the rim. Tipler a little bit out of control, tries to dump it for Grain, stolen away, and now Numbers the other way for the Eagles. Missed layup, tip won't go, another offensive rebound. And Caesar with the rebound. Shots were really lucky there, it was three on one. The missed layup and no white shirts till a tip from North Carolina Central, and then Tim Caesar got in, got, got fouled. That should have been a layup for the other guys. 
Caesar was lucky there. Found on Nicholas Fennell, his first. Eagles led 13 to four right at the start of this game. And Asam Mostafa, the early MVP after two games yep. to start the season for the Shana Clears, only played a couple of minutes, picked up a couple of early fouls. So he has sad ever since. It's averaging a double-double for the season as we showed you in the open. If Coach Ellis can go in that locker room with tied or maybe even a lead with two of his two best big players sitting, that's a plus going in that locker room. North Carolina Central obviously wants to stop that. Yeah, Mostafa and Thomas each on the bench with two fouls. Another whistle. Foul on Justin Wright, the freshman for North Carolina Central. Just got It's an automatic call whether you push him or not when you get both hands on the offensive player. And we talked about the one and one There it is right there. Mr. Tipler at the line for a one and one. Both teams aggressive defensively, and we said early in the game, who's going to get to the one and one first? Shanta Clears win that little. They don't win the war yet. They just won the little battle. Interesting move here by Coach Ellis if this goes in. Now an 8-0 run, and you're right. So Deshaun Thomas with two fouls is going to come back in. And Garrett Green will have a seat on the bench. Well, Tim Caesar and Garrett Green were the two posts, and they were playing the a lot of minutes in a row. It's who you want to finish with. You, you put the guy in you, that you don't want to finish with. He wants to finish with Mustafa. That's what I read out of it. Be quick, but don't hurry. Cabea a little quick with that screen illegally. Yeah, he, oh, yeah. Just, he just moved right into Devontae yep, Jones. you gotta be, got to be stationary. Good call. These are three very good officials, by the way. Anthony Jordan, Patrick Evans, and Alandis Poole are officials tonight. Caesar trying to get a handle on it. Loose ball comes down to the Eagles. Moultrie quickly to the other end. And offensive foul. Good job by Devontae Jones to see what was developing. Get outside that arc. And take the blow. Watch him. He turns around. That's a really good call because that young man is flying at him. Jamar Moultrie. On the other end, Tim Caesar tried to dribble it off the floor. It's only been one human I've ever seen do that. That was Mark Price in, in college and in the pros. you got to pick the ball up with two hands. Mark Price could dribble it off the floor. If you don't know who that is and you're young, Google him. Number 25 for the Cavaliers. <laughs> A great one for Bobby Kremens at Georgia Tech as well. Jones spins, throws it up too short, rebound down to the Eagles. I think he thought he was going to get a foul call there. Good defense by Tipler there. Stop Kaiser. Oh, near steal by Dixon. Moultrie for three. Missed it. And out of bounds, Coastal's going to get it. Uncle Mo was at half court. Well, first of all, he was at North Carolina Central's bench for much of the first half. He's at half court. He's leaning towards the coastal bench right now, but not there yet. Up five. Coach Ell is calling a play or a set off the bench here. We'll see how, what it is against man. I would think it goes inside, inside the 24 eventually. Dixon behind the back. Good defense again by the Eagles. Dixon just trying to shoot over the top of him. Missed it. The rebound down to Perkins. Jamar Moultrie wouldn't let him go by him. Great defense. North Carolina Central trying to snap an 8-0 run. And there's a two-pointer as Heels run the line. So Kaiser with another two. And he now has eight points. It's a tough match for Tim Caesar, But you got to play who you got to play in transition. He's matched up on him. He's got to stay with him. Three-point lead for the Shauna Clears. Caesar for three. Too strong. Dixon trying to go up high for the rebound. Out of bounds. He touched it last, so the Eagles will get it. Tim Caesar looks gassed out there. He looks really tired right now. Oh, 
North Carolina Central now a chance to make this a one-point game, maybe even tie it again. Here's what they do, and they're going to go in. If, if you give them a break, they're going to drive off of it. If not, they're just going to run their stuff. Perkins dishes it underneath, and a foul. We'll see who it goes against. They try to go down low to the new guy, Jonathan Maxwell, again, who just joined the team today. Guy's pretty active for somebody that hasn't been on the roster yet. Has a three, did a nice job to get the ball inside there. Going to go to free throw line. His percentage is, I don't know, because he hasn't shot any yet. Pretty good touch there on the first one. Transfer from Iona, did not play last year. Big body. Started out his career at the junior college ranks. And knocks both of them in and makes it a one-point game. Nice addition to give to the lineup right before you get ready for conference play in a week or two. Dixon just cannot go by Moultrie. He, Moultrie's a heck of a defender. Now we're in a little box and one. Dixon trapped on the baseline, kicked it out to Jones. He's been quiet. Trying to hit that three, but too strong. Caesar knife offensive rebound behind the back to Jones. Oh, oh, oh. Tim Caesar got it all going with the offensive rebound, and then a great pass to Devontae Jones for a layup behind the back, as you called it. Here comes Diva on the run out. Over to Dixon. To Caesar in the lane. Jump stop, little fade away. Can't get it to go. Put back by Jones, won't go. Boy, North Carolina Central moving quickly. Bounce pass in the lane over to Maxwell. Nice pass, good finish. Jordan Perkins, I didn't see it, but Jordan Perkins saw it and got it to his man. One point game coming up on three and a half to play first half. And for Diva, the shot clock now at nine. He's got the matchup he wants. Gives it up into the corner. Caesar hits a three from the corner. Three, two, Number 24, Nicholas Fennell, excuse me, Fennell was guarding Tim Caesar, but on the drive he had to come and help. Kicked it out. And Tim Caesar's capable of making threes, as we saw right there. Nice steal. Kaiser lost it. Jones all alone to the other end. John's turning up the heat a little bit on the defensive end. They weren't bad defensive earlier. North Carolina Central was just better. A little 5-0 run here by the Shawna Clears. Perkins out to Moultrie. That's Shot a clock quick quickly man. down to nine. Moultrie has it <laughs> blocked by Thomas. He was just waiting for him with two fouls. He did not come close to fouling him. Diva swings it over to Dixon, but the defense catches up with him. Diva spins in the lane. Oh, offensive foul against Abrima Diva. That was close. That's all I'm going to say. That was close. First Watch foul this on pass. Diva. This is special. I know where you are. I'll give it to you. Easy, too. After a 2-0 start to the season, head coach Cliff Ellis told us, Nate, that this game tonight against the defending MEAC champions was going to be a whole lot different, and no one knows it better than Cliff Ellis in his 46th season as a head coach, and there you see needing just four wins to break into the top ten all-time Division I wins. And you know he told them, guys, this is a different team than the first two, and he showed him video, but until you get out there, and they took a pretty good shot in the mouth from North Carolina Central early. Now they've come back from it a little bit. But no matter how many times you tell them until they see it, and they played them last year too, but until they see it, uh, it's a different ball game. But they've responded well, and he knows how to push the buttons because he's done it for many, many times, years, and a ton of wins. Only coach 
in college basketball history with over 170 wins at four different schools and now a steal and a finish by Dixon. Speaking of pushing the right buttons, a little trap double team out of the timeout. Got a layup out of it. I love Deep at the top of this press because he's so big at 6'6". Thomas changed that one. He didn't block it, but he definitely changed it. Thomas playing with two fouls had to be super careful, but you're right, did a great job of altering that shot. He's got three blocks, two fouls, as you just said, and smart by just going straight up, made the offense change, and then a foul on NC Central, and the shot's back at the line. Another 7-0 run now by Coastal Carolina. About the five or six minute mark, it was an 8-0 run by the Chanticleers. There's Garrett Green. That's their first miss from the line, too. There's a young man that doesn't average 20 points a game, but really changes momentum in the basketball game by his effort. Senior from Louisiana. 8-0 run again here for Coastal. I like I, Cliff Ellis is a genius. I like this little move, putting Deeb up top to mess with him, and now he's playing his own. And they're taking their time with 12 left on the shot clock to figure out what it is so they can attack it. Yeah, Melvin just looking it over. Got a shot, turns it down, swings it over to Palmer for three, way short, and Dixon had it, loses out of bounds. Yeah, he'll probably go man since it's underneath. It's just hard to play a zone underneath and get back out the shooters. That's exactly what he's doing. Doesn't mean he won't change when it comes back out, though. Coming up on one minute left in the first half. Still a man. Palmer had to alter his shot again. And the Eagles just able to save it. <laughs> Devontae Jones playing so much Stevens. He just looked up the shot clock. How many more times I got to do this? <laughs> he just saw 12. Melvin penetrates, kicks it out to Kaiser for three. Well done. And Mr. Kaiser turned and looked at the uh, Chanticleer bench as he came by. I don't know if he said anything, but he definitely gave him a stare. Kaiser into double digits now with 11. Six point lead for Coastal. 22 seconds left. About a second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Diva drives, kicks it to Thomas. Now back to Diva, four seconds left, and Diva got a little anxious and shuffled his feet. So now the Eagles might have a chance here at the last shot with five seconds. Probably not a bad move to get Thomas out of there, and that's exactly what Benny Moss is yelling at him. Nope, he's just telling him to communicate. Watch out for number 22 here, C.J. Kaiser, averaging 24 points per game so oh. far this season. He's he brings it, it up. Court. Two seconds left to short green with the rebound, and that'll bring us to the end of half. So a pair of 8-0 runs late in the first half leads Coastal Carolina from behind, and He'll take a six-point lead into the break. 38-32, shot of clears. Congratulations to the Coastal Carolina football team. What a weekend and what a game. ESPN College Game Day in town on Saturday morning, and then the football team followed it up with a win over 13th ranked BYU and now the Shauna Clears up to number 11 in the country today in the AP Top 25. What a win. Unbelievable weekend and the coolest thing I saw was a picture of BYU coach and Jamie Chadwell at midfield and the BYU coach took his hat off to fist pump Jamie Chadwell. I thought that was really cool. Congratulations on the win. 22 to 17 and again the Shauna Clears now up to number 11 in today's AP Top 25, and now Shauna Clear Nation will be Six foot sophomore,
So someone was saying they couldn't hear our audio at all. I don't I don't know what's going on. You're you're hearing you're hearing us? Hey, wait, wait, hey, I'm gonna turn it. Can you Yeah, so the audio is off right now and you're still I think maybe it's drowning. Here can, Testing one two one two, can you hear me? Testing one two. What? 
You said you are getting it? Henry 
deep triple, no.
this is a team free-throw wise. They're having the biggest lead, which is a rare one. What are they at? 68.5 million. That's what I'm talking about. So the books are kind of This is an area where they Only 
was all this close. So, like his, besides man's two fouls, I've got three fouls. He could be in the And Colonel fans, you want to be in the stands at every home sporting event but can't. Vision shots. Or you want to try adding it back in. Fancutouts.com slash product slash nickels dash university. You can purchase your fan cut out today. Again, that's shot.fancutouts.com slash product slash nickels dash university. I think we might have the reason. So so if you if you stop the stream or do it, does that will people still be able to watch or no? I I don't know. It should be I mean it should be Break here from Conway, South Carolina. Don't go anywhere. This is a good one tonight. 524. Make sure you stay up to the minute. Turn on my legs on social media. Visit us at Don't Learn. I love. Little by little.
North Carolina Central, the three-time defending MEAC Conference Tournament champions on the road, down by just three with 524 left to play. There's see big number 44, Hassan Mostafa for Coastal Carolina, playing with four fouls. Here's Moultrie. Now over to Perkins. It's a box and one, and C.J. Kaiser is being guarded by Tim Caesar. Easy bucket there. Perkins makes it a one-point game. Mustafa with four fouls, and Dixon. Actually, correction, Dixon picked up his fifth. They just corrected it during the timeout, so Dixon has fouled out of this game. Yeah, the double technical was So good. he actually had three, is what they're saying. Picked up his fourth on that collision, and then and the, then the technical yep. was his fifth. So Dixon is out of this game. Technical foul is a personal foul as well. And you're saying what people are asking if they're watching, why didn't they shoot shots? Because a double technical, you do not shoot. I found that out about six years ago when we were going to halftime. There was a big fight, and I said, double technicals. We're going to shoot at both ends. And then I found out that I was wrong. <laughs> Debo with five points. And make it six. 62 to 59. Shots in a box in one. Caesars guarding Kaiser. Just trying to take Kaiser out of it. Kaiser should run off screen, took it open like that. Too short. Rebound by Diva. Might have forced it a little quicker than he wanted. That's the reason you play that defense. Jones crossover and finishes at the rim. What a play. Shanta clears a tough in transition. The quick shot by Kaiser and the run out. Oh, just a nasty crossover, Nate. Yes, wow. it was. Kaiser was there, but he was a little later. He might have been in the off. Nonetheless, it's a foul on him. That was dirty. What a play. Well, and that foul against Kaiser, now his fifth. Because of the double technical earlier, gave him his fourth. Huge turn of events. So Kaiser, the team's leading scorer, is out. Well, the box and one's off. Jumper by Fennell, too strong. Mustafa hanging in there with four fouls, gets the rebound. Transition opportunity. Diva. He's tough. He's just tough in transition. He's tougher with the ball. The bench just went nuts to our right here for Coastal Carolina. Scoop shot, and now a six-point lead for the shot of clears. 3.45 to play. And now a drive and a finish on the other end by Moultrie. It's got to be a little emotional letdown when your leading score fouls out, like NC Central's just did. Of course, Dixon fouled out as well, but he's not the leading scorer in the team, but a nice play right there to get an easy shoot by Moultrie. muted right now. But. No, I'd, I'd, I would much rather boost that mic right there than I don't want anything to do with this one, so... Diva can't get it to go. All right. Offensive Thanks. Put back by Mostafa. All right, man. Well, we'll hope and pray this is all good. I hope. Certainly hope. Ball right to the corner for Fennell. Driving baseline. Bumped by Tipler. Oh. 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 So I'll tell you what, um, why don't you do, I'll let you do play by play to start the third. Okay. That I, I kind of, you know, like I want to, if it's, if it's like crunch time or something, I'd, I'd like to be doing it at the yeah. end just okay. to, just to, um, just to do that. But, um, yeah, I'll let you do the third if it's a close game or whatever. Tar Heels try to stop Miami's momentum cold. Well, head coach Cliff Ellis said after the opening two games for Coastal Carolina, the schedule was about to get a whole lot more difficult, and boy, was he right. Tonight, the defending MEAC champs in town, North Carolina Central. We'll see Greensboro College on the 12th, but then at Wofford, Nate, a big game facing that uh, Southern Conference team, the Terriers, on the 15th, and then Delaware State 
No easy task as well. And another smart move by Mr. Ellis. Back to back games on 17 of December 18. Back at Stouffer Gym in Thibodeau. Halftime, Jackson State leads Nichols 39 to 28 with Stephen Sherman, Jack Benjamin on hand. Nichols in that first half shoots at just 37% from the floor, two for 10 from three. And they trail by double digits in large part because of well, Jackson State shooting the ball 54%, Stephen, but they get a combined 33 points from their two stars in Deja Rogan and Amisha Williams. No, absolutely. You said it. Deja Rogan, Amisha Williams, 33 of the 39 points. Only two other Lady Tigers have scored. So un until you put a body on Williams and a body on Rogan, it's going to be tough sledding here in the second half of the Colonels. So Rogan, 17 points, 7 of 10 floor, 3 for 5 from 3. Williams goes 8 for 11 from the floor. You know, it's not just the fact that they had 33 points. We were discussing this, but the fact that it only took them 21 shots to get those 33 points, it's just been too easy for them offensively. What can Nichols do a little differently on those two? Yeah, so Williams and, and Rogan, they're getting where they want on the field, on, on the court. Right. Williams down low, Rogan mid-range area. It, you're going to have to play more physical if you're the Colonels. You're going to have to get up in the grill and, and, and put some pressure on them, you know, especially down low on Williams, whether it be Kane, Bolzova, Will, uh, Washington. You're going to have to put a body on her, box her out, and like you said, get positioned before the ball is passed to her, not after or, or during because at that point it's just too late. Meanwhile, Nichols 37% from the field, 11 for 30, led by China Allen's 10 points. Talked about her being a spark. It's not like she came off the bench. She started. Three of six in the field. Did miss four free throws, but she also took all eight of the Colonels' free throws. So, you, you know, you live with the good and the bad here for China Allen. But offensively, I, I think a big concern here for Doobie Plazons is who else can you get going? Chelsea Kane, your leading scorer, coming in more than 13 points per game, held to just two points. And Adrian Mann, one of their starting guards, committed two quick fouls. She only played three minutes and didn't score. Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, China Allen, the, the, the spark plug for the Colonels' offense thus far. Adrian Mann, I want to see more from her in the second half. Like you said, two early fouls, but one of the leading scorers here for the Colonels, who also can be an offensive spark plug. You've got to see more from her. Terrace McKay, Chelsea Kane, and Terrace McKay coming off the 21 per per point per performance at uh, Louisiana, or excuse me, against South Alabama last Tuesday. I want to see, I want to see more for her. I don't want to see her settle for jump shots. I want to see her drive and kick or drive and put put up a shot that she can make. So offensively, some struggles there for the Colonels. We talked about this earlier, but turnovers were a huge key coming in, right? Could Nichols take Jackson State turnovers, convert them into points? Well, so here's the good news for Dewey Plaisance and company for the Colonels. They forced 13 turnovers, and they end up turning those turnovers into 12 points. But I feel like it could have been a lot more with how much activity they had defensively. I mean, Nichols also had five steals in that first half. Jack, you've got to protect the ball, and Coach Plaisance knows that. She, 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 she lives by that. Nine turnovers in the first half for the Colonels doesn't cut it. And although you did force 13 from Jackson State, a four, point, a, four, a four turnover difference when it's 13 and nine really isn't that much of a difference. That's a lot of turnovers either way you look at it. So we're just about ready here for the start of the second half. We'll assume starters each way. And for the start of the third quarter, turn it over here to Stephen Sherman for the play-by-play. -play. Thank you, Jack. Again, Jackson State leads Nickel State 39 to 28 at half. Nichols with Mann, McKay, Bolzova, Allen, and Kane to start the half. Coastal 14 of 18 from the free throw line tonight. They beat it every single one of them. Nice pass and goaltending against Caesar. Good call. Save five for Jackson State as well. Williams, Luckett, Peyton, Rogan, and Womack. Jackson State with possession to start the third quarter. Here we go from Thibodeau, Louisiana. Ball in the hands, the hot hands of Rogan. Offensive three seconds, early turnover here. First possession with a turnover here for Jackson State. Might make that 14 for the game. Yeah, I think the one complaint Tamika Reed has about her team in that first half was turning the ball over because they shot 54% from the field. They knocked down a bunch of threes, got 33 points from her two stars. They just gave away too many possessions. Colonel's moving the ball around. Here's Adrian Mann. Want to see more out of her here in the second half. Pass into Chelsea Kane. Tough shot in between three Lady Tigers off the glass. And here come Jackson State. That's what this defense does. They make you rush shots as a big, right? She's seeing all kinds of arms down there. And then an easy shot that's maybe a hook, one step, drop step, becomes a much tougher little uh, putback opportunity. It's hard to see when you got three defenders in between you and the basket. Here's a three-pointer. 
Won't go. That was Rogan off the back heel. She's three for six this evening. Yeah, it feels awkward. It almost feels odd when the ball doesn't go in when she's <laughs> shooting tonight. She's been getting everything she's wanted as, as well as Amisha Williams down low. And she's someone, we talked about this, but she comes over from Northeast Community College, one of the many JUCO transfers on this team. Played well last year. Here's Adrian Mann with a three. Bounced around the rim. Won't go. Taken away by the Lady Tigers in Jackson State trying to push the pace. Rogan into... That's Womack. Womack lays it up and in. Yeah, they're just beating Nichols down the floor here, Steve, and that they can't are. happen. And I think Doobie plays on so she walks around the way she typically struts on that sideline. She's telling her big, so you got to get down the floor. Colonel's trying to find a spark offensively. This man falls down. Finds Kane. Kane drives baseline. Tough shot. She's fouled. She'll go to the line. I believe the foul was on... Oh, fouls on Alexis Payton. That's been her aggressiveness, Stephen, from Chelsea Kane, right? Last time she goes up, sort of fades away for her half hook try. Go into the body of Womack. Go into the body of Williams. The, the main thing you want to do against the shot blocker, I guess there's two things. If you're a smaller player, you know, you try to go for reverse and use the backboard as a shield, but go at them, which means that they can't block your shot going vertically. Exactly. Although Nichols can't make free throws right now. They've already missed five tonight. He has 16. Kane misses both. Rebounded by Jackson State. Tough, tough break for the Colonels. Five missed free throws tonight already. Early third quarter here. Just over eight minutes to go. Here's Williams. She's been beating Nickel State in, in the interior all night long. And here she is again. Williams guarded by Kane. Force it. Kane forced her too strong that time. Out of bounds, it'll be Colonel Ball. That's great defense there from yeah, Chelsea Kane. Yeah, and we talked in the first half, Stephen, about Chelsea Kane, and whether it's Kane, Bolazova, Manley, whoever, make her work to get post position, right? It can't be, okay, yeah, you can have the ball on the block and then I'll guard you. You better do your work five feet beyond the block because by the time she gets there, it's too late. Absolutely. That's a really good job by Chelsea Kane. You can't recover against Williams. She's too strong, too quick, too good. Here's Chelsea Kane. Tough shot, a lot of contact, and again, she'll go right back to the line. Foul is on Williams. And again, can Nichols start to make free throws? They're 4 for 10 at the line. We talked about this stat. 73.5% last year. They've been over 70% the previous five years. This season has just been, it's been a troublesome spot, right? You lose by 8 against South Alabama, a game where they miss 7 free throws. Have to start making your freebies. Kane 0 for 2 on the evening, knocks down her first. One timeout left as we approach. One minute left to play. Someone who's just gotten better and better, right? From last year, four, five points per game. Here she is now averaging better than 13. Just impressive to see the way she's grown. We've seen the jump shot improve, her post moves, and then defensively she's been much better. Absolutely. And you saw on the, la on the last uh, possession, which I don't think you would have seen her freshman year right. on, on, on uh, Williams. And here we see Williams, a pass into Williams, knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Colonel Ball. Great activity between Washington and Kane down low. Much better defense. How about the help from the backside, too? They bring him, That might be the adjustment for Do Doobie Plaisance, bring that help side defender on the weak side where – Williams, who's such a good passer, too, can't see the double team. Now here's China Allen. The spark plug offensively the first half. Air balls a three. Man was already out of bounds when she tried to save it. Tough break for the Colonels. It'll be Jackson State ball up 11 with seven and a half to go here in the second, excuse me, the third quarter. Yeah, I think you live with open three-pointers, but maybe not take them five seconds into the shot clock. <laughs> There's a reason why you're that open. Right. Here's Womack over to Rogan. Rogan with Kane on her. Step back, Jay. Won't go. Here come the Colonels. Terrace McKay trying to push it. Ball poked away. Poked out of bounds by Alexis Payton. She didn't see her. Out of bounds. It'll retain Colonel possession. Yeah, I think Payton might have stumbled on that edge piece of the court. You know, it's, a, it's an elevated floor here. You have that maybe six, seven inch drop off, and I think her foot might have gotten caught on the edge. With that, Jariah Covington comes in for the Lady Tigers. Inbound to Washington. Back to Mann. Mann drives baseline. Good defense there. Back out to McKay. Her three-pointer is too strong. And who else? Womack comes down with it. Two for 12 now from three. Here we go. Terrace McKay on the steal. Finds Adrian Mann. Pump fake. Puts it up. Fouled by Womack. 
she'll go to the line shooting two. Great play there, fortunate the turnover for Terrace McKay. That's great. Six steals last time at career high against South Alabama and just picks the pocket of Rogan in the backcourt. That's just a terrific job defensively. This is the kind of plays you have to make. You're down 11 against, and we've talked about it, Jackson State is 0-3. This is a very good 0-3 team. About as good a mid-major as you'll find with what they did in the SWAC last year. And You have to play that kind of defense if you want to get back in this game. Absolutely, absolutely. Adrian Mann knocks down her first free throw of the evening, as well as the second. Back to a nine-point game here in Thibodeau. On the other side, North Carolina Central. They have to score here. And Sherelle Jones checks in for the Lady Tigers. She replaces who else but Womack. Now here you go with your nickels. You're doing the job defensively. JSU in the second half, one, well, in the third quarter, one for four. The question is, can you start stringing together some baskets? They're going to call a foul before the held ball. The foul's going to be on Brianna Washington. And it'll be a side out here for the Lady, line, Lady Tigers. Excuse me. Jackson State up nine. 6.42 to go here in the third quarter. Rogan thought about the three. Better close at that time. Puts on the moves, jump shot. It was forced and it was short. Good defense there from China Allen. And of course, who gets the rebound? Who else? <laughs> who else? Williams with the re. And the Lady Tigers trying to feed Williams. They find her, get it into Covington. Covington puts up a shot, count it, and one. Fouls on Adrian Mann. She doesn't agree with the call, but shot's good. Basket will count, and she'll go to the line shooting two. That's Jariah Covington. Excuse me, shooting one. That's a difficult shot. Pivoting around off your wrong leg and able to bank it home. Very impressive from the junior from Starkville. And here we see Anna McKendry checking in for Adrienne Mann as she now has three personal fouls. You know, I think one thing we're seeing with Jackson State and really what Tamika Reed is trying to do with this JSU team when you read about them and, and talk to them is that free throw is good. They have so many guards who can put the ball on the bounce and make plays, right? Absolutely. It's not like they have people who can stand on the perimeter and make shots. They can all drive to get to the basket. Here's Washington. Washington finds an open. Anna McKendry, who passes to Terrace McKay. Great move. Easy layup there for Terrace McKay. Great dish. Great penetration there for Terrace McKay. It's a good job. Had an open three. Saw an open lane, though. And why not take a wide open layup? Here we go. Williams shot over Kane. Misses this one, tipped around, out of bounds, and I believe it, it, Colonel Ball. Good defense there from Chelsea Kane, who was in Williams' face. I think I said this about Amisha Williams earlier, Stephen. Anytime she takes something that isn't a layup or a hook shot, I, I, you live with it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, And now uh, she sits, and here's a, a part of the game where you have to take advantage of your nickels because absolutely. of her prowess to block shots and also score. What a great finish by this young man. Here comes China Allen and the Colonel offense. Step back three. Tough shot there for China. Looked like, looked like it was a little forced. As number 13, Alexis Payton, was there defensively. And here comes Covington. Covington all the way to the basket. Lays it up over two Colonels in between Kane and Washington. Colonels getting a little sloppy with it. China Allen here with the ball. Counted by Desha Rogan at the top of the key. Covington's a good player. A couple of nice drives back to back. And Chelsea Kane called for too many steps. Another Colonel turnover. That's their 10th. First here in the third quarter. But tough break for the Colonels. They cannot find an offensive. They can't find offensive life. Yeah, I was going to say, Nichols has done a nice job not turning the ball over as they'll sub again and get Womack in. But they, they've had chances, it feels like, to get this to a, a, a two-possession game, a five-point game. And they just can't string together great offensive possessions. Again, a lot of four shots, a lot of turnovers, obviously. It's not the Colonel offense we're used to seeing. Yeah, I just don't think the ball is moving the way they want. Typically, assist to turnover numbers are something you look at, and only five, five assists to ten turnovers. Tells you the baskets they are making are mainly isolation and not a lot of movement. Here's Covington again, all the way to the basket, misses the point blank layup. Don't worry. Put back up and in by Sherelle Jones. Senior out of Memphis. Another offensive rebound here for the Lady Tigers. And that's our first basket of the season. Colonel's trying to feed Brianna Washington down low. Here's Chelsea Kane. She drives. Finds a cutting. Terrace, Terrace McKay on the baseline. She's blocked, but a foul called. Good penetration. Good find there by Chelsea Kane. And Terrace McKay earns a trip to the free throw line. 
And with that, it'll be immediate timeout. And we'll be back after this on the Nichols Sports Network.